Tonight in the future of everything, think small, very small. We're talking about semiconductors, those tiny chips that power every device we rely on, from smartphones to rockets. But here's the problem. America is falling way behind. While factories in Asia are churning out these chips, the U.S. is struggling to train a workforce that can actually keep up. Now there's a new push in Indiana to create the next generation of chip engineer. NBC News business and data correspondent Brian Chunk takes us there. With summer in swing, school's out at Purdue University. But for these students, class is very much in session. And there's a pretty strict uniform in this particular classroom that involves some suiting up. And yes, for visitors too. All right, let's do this. Because these students are working in a real clean room where they're making microchips. This is how you start it and how you stop the actual deposition. Delicately depositing metals onto silicon wafers. And under special yellow lights, looking at the blueprint of what will be etched onto the light sensitive chips. How big is this? Yeah. That metal is about 50 nanometers thick. That is just under a thousand times thinner than a human hair. This is the STARS program in its second year, where 100 underclassmen learn how to design, manufacture, and package their own semiconductor chips in settings typically reserved for older students. Tim Miller is a research engineer in the clean room. What types of jobs is this lab preparing students for? Oh, uh, uh, the, the full spectrum. He says the hands-on experience is key. The whole world of semiconductors and nanotechnology is so specialized. And there's so many arcane little details that you have to understand all of that to get the magic to work, to get the, the, the actual chip to work when you're at the end of the road. It's expensive equipment, but it's Purdue's bet on the future of microchip manufacturing right here in the United States where the Biden administration is investing billions of dollars to convince companies here and abroad to make it in the U.S. We will enable advanced semiconductor manufacturing to make a comeback here in America after 40 years. South Korean company SK Hynix is building a facility right in Purdue's backyard of West Lafayette, Indiana. This is going to provide opportunities for students to stay here. Mark Lundstrom is the chief semiconductor officer at Purdue and says it's going to be a national effort to staff these new facilities. We just felt we have a responsibility to help the nation address this challenge. The stakes are high. The U.S. is in a race against countries in Asia to ramp up chips production and make sure the U.S. is fully stocked. In 1990, the U.S. was producing nearly 40 percent of the world's semiconductors. In 2022, that figure was just 10 percent. McKinsey warns that if the industry doesn't do more to attract talent, it will be short of over 100,000 engineers, meaning the time is now. I've been working in this field for 50 years, and you'd think after 50 years, things would kind of be stale and mature and not so exciting. There has never been a more exciting time in this industry than right now. With the rise of artificial intelligence and electric vehicles, demand for semiconductor production is skyrocketing, projected to triple in the U.S. by 2032. At Purdue, that means the lessons don't stop at manufacturing chips. They're building boards, testing them, and you can see it's, it's still, still flashing, and designing them to help carry out real-life functions like robotics. This is about the speed we want. Or music synthesizers. It cost them a summer, but the students are paid in career prospects. This took a lot of work, but we're really proud of the results. As well as $10,000 each, thanks to grants from industry sponsors. Did you ever think you'd be spending your summer in a place like this? Absolutely not. <laughs> With Purdue chipping in to the future of semiconductors. Certainly beats my summer internships. Brian Chung joins us now, trading one suit for another. Uh, Brian, love the story. We know the CHIPS Act was passed back in 2022. So I'm curious, how is the, the U.S. looking at building up the industry here? Yeah, I have a little bit more mobility in this suit, by the way. But yes, indeed, it is in the case that, uh, you know, CHIPS Act was passed years ago. But as of right now, the Semiconductor Industry Association has counted about $30 billion in grants that have already been doled out, another $25 billion in loans. These are to companies uh, that are American, like, for example, Micron and also Intel, which are building massive facilities in Syracuse, New York and Arizona, respectively. But a number of other foreign players are being invited to get into this CHIPS money and build in the United States. 
United States as well, like the big Goliath, the biggest maker in the world, TSMC from Taiwan. They have a huge facility going up in Arizona as well. But those projects are going to take a while. And when we talk about the SK Hynix facility that was uh, announced in West Lafayette in Indiana, well, yeah, that was announced in April of this year. Production won't begin in mass production uh, scale, at least, until 2028, which is the reason why they really want to get the pipeline of these students done early. For that reason, they're really putting in all their chips into the middle of the table. You get it? Did you, did you get that? Uh, I see what you, I, okay. I see what you did there. Well done, <laughs> sir. You obviously got to see some pretty cool stuff when they kind of pulled back the curtain on this whole process. I am curious, what surprised you most when you were walking back there, uh, just seeing what they were working on in real time? Well, what the really amazing thing about this STARS program is, is that, again, it's really about early exposure for these underclassmen to this new type of technology. They have had this lab at Purdue for a while, but it was oftentimes uh, upperclassmen and even grad students that were mostly getting time in the lab. So you're talking about 18, 19-year-olds, freshmen and sophomores that are making chips. I mean, Morgan, I don't know about you, but when I was 18 or 19 years old, I didn't even know if I wanted to do liberal arts when I was in college. I was basically just trying to have fun. So it was really cool to talk to these kids who were like, oh, Oh, I know exactly what I want to do. I want to get into lithography for making chips. I mean, it was mind-blowing. It was also inspiring. I'm like, man, these kids are way smarter than me. Uh, you're being modest, but they are definitely <laughs> ahead of the game, and we loved it, that peek behind the curtain. Brian Chung, thanks so much.